Welcome to the Atlanta Center for I Am. I'm your host, Bernard Smalls, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we are going to continue our powerful study, It Takes Guts to Leave Ruts. Are you in a rut today? Are you in a rut of life? You know, many, instead of living in the way of life, they tend to live in the rut or the ruts of life. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It takes guts to leave ruts, and you have guts. So stay tuned, join us in worship, and I'll be right back with the word today. continue our study today of it takes guts to leave ruts. Guts to leave ruts is a biblical yet practical motivational teaching. One of the things I've dealt with over the years is I've always had this motivational thrust, this motivational drive, this motivational insight in me, and I've always hungered for motivational materials. But motivational materials with a biblical foundation. And I found that as I read and applied those things, those things work the most in my life. Now, you want to learn the stuff that'll help you to make money. (laughs) I mean, what really makes you money? You can talk about faith. You can talk about God. You can talk about the Holy Spirit and all that. And I'm, I'm not against any of the spiritual stuff. But how do I say this? I found that the practical stuff, when you get passionate about the practical and you become a doer of the word, that's when you start to see manifestation. That's when you start to see the nice stuff, the prosperity. And I'm not all about money, all about prosperity, but I'm talking about manifesting things in this material world. See, we need to understand that the whole world operates by cause and effect. For every effect, there is a cause. This is why I love teaching on the concept of I am so much. Because when you say the words I am, say after me, I am rich. Say it again, I am rich. Now say I am prosperous. Now say I am successful. You just release the law of cause and effect because I am is the cause, rich, prosperous, successful, or whatever you say after I am is shaped in your life. And I found that the way the creator set this program up, that's the way everything works. Now, a lot of Christians are just saying, we're just waiting for the Lord, waiting for the Lord. You know, the Lord, one of these days, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. (laughs) Come on, man. That's not the way this thing works. That's not the way this planet works. If you're going to prosper, you're going to succeed, you're going to live your dream, You're going to have to get a hold of some laws. And we teach largely here spiritual law. Some people call me a spirit 
psychologists <laughs> because we bring spiritual and psychology together in a practical way. Well, that's just a little um, add on what we do here and a little um, uh, mission checkup. So let's go back to our study on guts to leave rut. So now you know why we're teaching on takes guts to leave rut because some of you, what kind of a, what kind of a church is this? <laughs> it's church for those who don't do traditional religious church, okay? Takes guts to leave rut. So we've been talking about the secrets of leaving any rut. And in order to leave a rut, you need to, first of all, develop an attitude of positive expectancy. You got to get a positive mental attitude, PMA all the way. Now, just think about that for a moment. A positive mental attitude, is that practical or is that spiritual? Well, actually, it's both because it's practical to be positive, but it's spiritual to renew the spirit of your mind. As Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23 says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amplified says, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. NIV says, be renewed in the attitude of your mind. In fact, many modern translations just say, be renewed in the attitude of your mind. So I see in the Bible that it's practical just as it's spiritual and it's spiritual just as it's practical. So let's say you want to prosper financially. What's your attitude? Do you have an attitude of positive expectancy? Do you expect prosperity? Say after me, I expect prosperity. Say, I expect success. Say, I expect good things to happen in my life because something good is going to happen to me now. <laughs> something good is going to happen to me. Oral Roberts coined that years and years ago. I remember when I was a, a little kid, I watched Oral Roberts on TV. My dad used to watch um, all the religious leaders. And Oral Roberts used to meet under these big tents. And he got a message of prosperity. Cheers. A lot of people don't know, but Oral Roberts didn't just teach healing. He taught on prosperity. And anyway, when they opened his show, he would say every day, something good is going to happen to me. And do you know some people got mad at him for saying that? Well, what do you want him to say? Something bad is going to happen? Develop an attitude of positive expectancy. So we are studying, it takes guts to leave ruts. And I know in this teaching, I'm just kind of... um inspirationally um, throwing things at you. I'm coming at you, as they say. But I want you to really catch the spirit of what we're saying, because this is real to me. This is real in my spirit. In fact, this stuff is the stuff I live by, the stuff I apply. And what we're endeavoring to do is to get Christian people to realize that biblical success principles work. We're teaching biblical success and takes guts to leave ruts, you could just say, well, you could call it, it takes faith to be victorious. It's saying the same thing, <laughs> but I'm a guts to leave ruts, man. I, I like um, I like the creative things. So what are we saying here? We're saying that it takes courage to move confidently in the direction of your dreams. And when we say courage, we're talking about a continuous movement in a direction. See, many of us start in a direction, but do we continue to move in that direction? How many things have you started that are now sitting in the garage, sitting in the closet, sitting in the box, sitting wherever, in the office, in the trunk of your car, that you started and you committed to doing? See, you did not have the commitment to your commitment. Now, let me talk to you a little straight here, okay? Can I? You got to make a commitment to your commitment. You got to be committed to, you got to be willing to die for it. Are you willing to die for what you believe? Jesus was. <laughs> Hello? And Jesus did. See, Jesus was committed to his commitment. The Father was committed to his commitment. And now he needs a people in the planet called the church to be committed to their commitments. But you don't have to die on a cross. <laughs> you may die in a business. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. You're not going to die in the business. I'm just having... You may feel like you're dying someday when you got bills to pay and rent and payroll and all this stuff. You don't know where the money's coming from. 
That's typical of death. <laughs> Paul said, I die daily. Okay. So when I say you may die, I'm not talking about physical. I'm not speaking death to you. Okay. But we all die daily. We die to ourselves. You know, I had to die to myself and get some coffee so we can do this recording today. Okay. Cheers. Why is getting coffee dying to yourself? <laughs> we suffer at a high level here. We're just having fun. But you got to die to yourself to prepare, to study, to get things ready, to teach. So we all have a price to pay. What we're saying is you got to make a commitment to that price. If you know what the price is for your success, are you committed to that price? Let's say you want to make more money. Let's say you want to increase your income. Are you committed to increasing your income? Are you committed to doing the things necessary to increase your income? Are you committed to listening to people like me and others and studying with us? By the way, keep your eyes open for our Guts 21 Day Challenge program that's coming. You may want to make a commitment to that program and to getting on the program with me for a period of time so that you can see the change in your life. See, uh, uh, psychologists say it takes 21 days to make a habit. Well, most of you, you start something on Monday. You start thinking, why did you start it on Tuesday? And you quit it on Wednesday. <laughs> and you wonder why you are not a success. Because it takes guts. In fact, I'm going to give to you now what I call my guts success system. And it's an acronym for success. And this works. Please stay with me. This will change your life. Okay, let's go through the acronym and we're going to use each letter with a word that is um, uh, relevant to the letter. All right, you'll see what I'm talking about. S is for simplicity. The first S is for simplicity. You see it big, yet you keep it simple. Everybody say, keep it simple. Simplicity is power. The more simple you can make your goal, your dream, your vision, the more powerful you become in accomplishing it. See, complexity leads to confusion. And when something is complex, people don't know what to do. You know, if you have too much information, too much direction, too many strategies, you're going to be confused. Keep it simple. U is for utilization. That means you use the ability that you have. What do you have? What do you have that you're not using? What's in your hand? What's in your heart? What's in your head? <laughs> you say, you don't want to know that. <laughs> well, what are you thinking? What, what's the dream? What is this dream? You got to use the ability that you have. James says you have to be a doer, not a hearer only. C is for conviction. You stand for something. Are you going to fall for anything? What convictions do you have? What will you absolutely do? What will you absolutely not do? The next C is for change. Paradoxically, security is only found in change. You can only find security is by, 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 by change. See, many people don't like change, but change is the key to security. We are studying It Takes Guts to Leave Ruts, and we're going through my success acronym, and we are taking a look at the letters and the equivalent word. Now, an acronym is when you have a letter that represents a word. And we said the first S is for simplicity. The U is for utilization. The C, first C is for conviction. And the next C is for change. Now, let's move into E, E. E, E, E is for execution. Execution means do it now. You got to have gung-ho goals and positive action. Now you must engage in positive action. I like Les Brown and Les Brown talks about that. You must engage in consistent positive action because it takes courage to live your dreams. Les Brown. <laughs> the motivator, the man. <laughs> All right, but you got to execute. You got to be gung ho. You got to get motivated. You got to get fired up. You got to not let people steal your motivation. You got to deal with the dream thieves. The next S is for service. Service is the path to greatness. 
You want to be great in the kingdom? Learn to be a servant of all. Servant, there is no greatness without service. Service is the key to greatness. Why are you great? Because you serve. You want to be great financially? Serve a lot of people. Well, you serve a lot of people, you make a lot of money. The more people you can serve, the more people you can reach, the more impact you have and the more results you get. Because remember, everything is cause and effect. And the final S is for strategy. Strategy. Why? Chance favors the prepared mind. Meaning, if you're prepared, Abraham Lincoln said, I will study, I will prepare, and my opportunity will come. So the guts success system. Say after me, it takes guts to leave ruts. Let's quickly review the acronym. S is for simplicity. U is for utility. C is for conviction. The next C is for change. The E is for execution. The next S is for service. And the final S is for strategy. Now, when you got a strategy and you start moving in a direction, if you've got a good strategy, you're going to succeed. Now, I want you to visit my website and check out our 21-day mental challenge program because that could be the strategy you need. And the site is center for I am. Dot com C E N T R E for I am dot com and we teach biblical success strategies and if you engage in this strategy it's going to change your life well thank you so much for studying with us if you enjoyed this teaching please share it with someone else and please continue to study with us as we continue our journey of guts to leave ruts. If you are a supporter, first of all, I want to thank you so much for your faithful support. Every gift is a blessing. And by the way, don't procrastinate support. If you if something in your heart says, go ahead and make a donation today. Don't say, well, I'll think about doing that next week. Well, you just put off because Jesus said, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And Jesus actually taught the concept of living one day at a time. So if you put off something until next week, you're not living in the now. Now, there's a whole teaching on the power of now, the power of faith. When's the best time to give? Now. <laughs> Why? You don't have next week. You don't know what's going to happen between now and next week. Now, here's what happens to a lot of people. They plan on giving and plan on giving and plan on giving. Then they get laid off from their job. Well, you say, I'm glad I didn't give since I got laid off from my job. Yeah, but now you're laid off with no seed. And life is all about sowing and reaping, cause and effect. See, had you sowed the seed in faith, when you got laid off, I've seen God sustain people that were laid off for a year or two, and they still never lost it, never lost a car, never lost their house, never lost anything because they had seed in the ground. We're talking about supernatural now when we talk about giving. So you go to centerforiam.com. And if you're a tither, we appreciate it. We believe in tithing. We believe that a tenth of everything in the earth is the Lord's. And if you're giving an offering, go ahead and give that offering. And we're going to stay with this. We're staying with good old-fashioned biblical success. I teach success principles, but we're believing that this is biblically based. And God wants you rich. God wants you prosperous. God said, I will bless you. God said, I'm the blessing of the Lord, for instance, come on, make it rich and adds no sorrow with it. Well, if, if, if poverty is a blessing, why would God make you rich? Poverty is not a blessing. Poverty is a curse. And we're showing you how to come out of poverty. And one thing you need to do is commit to tithing. Say, I can tithe. Come on, say it again. I can tithe. Well, you're talking about money a lot today. Well, go ahead and give some. <laughs> <laughs> How can you laugh when you say that? It's easy. <laughs> okay, we're just having fun here. Centerforiam.com. I got to get out of here. Centerforiam.com. Go over to the Give tab. And may the great I am, even God, expand your life and give you guts to leave ruts until your destiny is fulfilled. <laughs>